now show you an example of how to find the integer bounds on the roots of a polynomial equation. So the bounds on the roots are to try to see if you can give some sort of boundaries so that no number bigger than a number would be the solution to the equation, nor number, no number smaller than a number. So we're trying to squeeze in to kind of limit our um, interval in which we would look for the solutions of the polynomial equation. Now to get the integer bounds on the roots, we want them to be an integer, so like the whole numbers are their negatives. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, ne 0, negative 1, negative 2, etc. Now with the integer bounds on roots, there is a way to tell by what happens with your synthetic division table. If you're synthetically dividing by a positive number and the whole bottom row of the synthetic division process is all positive, then no number bigger than the number you divided by can be a real solution either. And if you're dividing by a negative number in your synthetic division process, with the entire bottom row coming out alternating signs, then no number smaller than that negative number can be a solution. So let's check to see how we'll do this problem. I noticed that my polynomial is in descending order and there's no powers missing in the process. So my synthetic division I can just set up with the coefficients of the polynomial and I'm going to divide by a positive number. And I kind of just have to pick a positive integer to see what happens and then go from there. So let's say I just picked really conservatively and I picked 2. So if I go through the synthetic division, bring the first number down without doing anything to it, 2 times 5 is 10, put the 10 up here, then negative 7 plus 10 is 3, then 2 times 3 is 6, but negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. Now at this point, because I'm looking for the integer balance on roots, and I divide it by a positive number, and I have a bottom row that's got a negative in it, I don't have an upper bound from um, the process that I've done so far, because I didn't get all positive numbers when dividing by a positive value. So I'm going to take and try another number that's bigger than 2. So let's try 3. So now bring down the first number, 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 7 plus 10, oh sorry. Bring down the 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Negative 7 plus 15 is 8. 3 times 8 is 24. Negative 8 plus 24 is 16. 3 times 16 is 48. Negative, positive 2 plus 48 is 50. And then 3 times 50 is 150, and negative 10 plus 150 is 140. So I divided by a positive 3, and the entire bottom of my synthetic division table is positive. I didn't get a 0 here, so I didn't find a root, but I did find what's called an upper bound. So since when I divided by positive 3, all the bottom row is all positive, that not only do I know that 3 is not a root, because I didn't get a 0 and it's a remainder, but also no number larger than 3 is a solution either. negative 10, 
And because I'm dividing by a negative number, I'm looking to see if the bottom row alternates in sign. So bring down the 5. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Negative 7 plus negative 10 is negative 17. Negative 2 times negative 17 is a positive 34. And negative 8 plus 34 is 26. Negative 2 times 26 is a negative 52. 2 plus a negative 52 is a negative 50. And then negative 2 times negative 50 is positive 100. And negative 10 plus 100 is 90. So I didn't get a zero here, meaning that negative 2 is not a root of the polynomial equation. Also, when I divided by the negative number, I went a bottom row of my synthetic division table alternates in sign. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So no number littler than negative 2 will be a root. And so negative 2 is a lower bound. So negative 2 is a lower bound, and positive 3 is an upper bound. We have found our integer bounds on our roots. And that also means that all of the real numbers that satisfy this polynomial equation have to be numbers whose values are somewhere between negative 2 and 3.